You are in the right place. We are here to talk about the Colorado Buffaloes taking on the Arizona State Sun Devils in Arizona this Saturday. What's the game plan? Before we get to the game plan, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a must-win game. I think everybody knows that. They need to get on the road before they go into more tougher games, okay? Now, Arizona State and Stanford are respectable programs. These are going to be games the Buffaloes are going to be favored in. In fact, I've seen some there favored by six points, some there favored by four and a half points going against Arizona State. But let me tell you, this is not going to be an easy game, okay? It's not. One, Arizona State is a fantastic program, legacy program out there. They want to do well. I get it. They're one in four, but it's not going to be an easy uh, task. I watched them going against USC. They're a pesky team. And that to me, that goes with their coach because their coach is uh, he's not the tallest guy. I think he's listed as five, six. He's one of those just grinders, those pesky kind of guys that want your team to be tough. And for right now, they're going to hang around and compete. And that's what they do at USC. They really made it a tough ball game they're going to show up and if you don't know if you've never been to arizona state stadium it's a beautiful campus it's going to be a kickoff time around five o'clock so it's still going to be really really hot out there and it doesn't matter what the record is it's always a packed house so it's going to be a hostile environment it's going to be sold out more than likely or have a lot of people there in the stands so it's not going to be a cakewalk and they want nothing more than to win coach dillingham is in his first year he is an Arizona State alum. He wants nothing more than to put this team back on the map. And he wants nothing more to say, no, I actually beat Coach Prime too in his debut year. You all need to, to be paying attention to the Arizona State program. And number three, they want to win for recruits because they're competing. They're going to be competing with Colorado when they go to the um, Big Ten, uh, not the Big Ten, the Big 12 with um, Colorado and other teams. Arizona State and Arizona are going to be right there. So it's really a lot on the line. They're going to put a lot of emphasis on this. All right. Now, let's go back over the coach, Coach Dillingham. Last year, he was the offensive coordinator for Oregon. OK, so he was under Dan Lanning. They have definitely talked. They have definitely given pointers on how to beat Colorado. And now do they have the personnel for it? I don't know, because it's going to be a little bit different for the Buffaloes. The output for the Arizona State offense has been, you know, roughly 28 zero to 28 points through the first four or five weeks okay so they scored 28 points against usc which is no slouch they just barely lost to california they got shut out in a game against fresno state 29 to nothing and to me that that sign that shows signs of a young team that has just been put together just like coach prime in colorado they just didn't gel as as early on as colorado did so they had a whole bunch of transfers too so they're trying to instill and and hold up a program but with that being said i don't think it's a high octane offense i don't think it's usc i don't think it's oregon so i don't think there's going to be a need for colorado to keep pace so they should be fine throwing and having more skilled players than them but i wouldn't want them to do that they need to continue to be balanced they need to run the ball when they ran the ball at usc if they really did that from the first quarter on that game could have been so much different completely different so they need to keep doing that so they can build momentum so when uh, Oregon State comes which is a going to be a more physical team they can run the football and then they can go deep on them and then they'll have a lot of their skill players back but I don't want to get too far ahead so let's go back to coach Dillingham he had stops key stops at Florida State and Memphis now something that coach Prime said in his press conference he dropped a gem on everybody he almost hired coach Dillingham He's like, what? They, they asked him, do, do you have any experience with him? He's like, yeah, I almost hired him. So he said when he got late in the process for another school, which I believe is TCU, to me, it was down between him and Sonny Dykes. And at that point, when you are at that point, you have to present to a school saying, hey, I have this coach on board. I have that coach on board as a coordinator. And to me, he may have known Coach Dillingham from – the Florida State connection. He knew his offensive mind was ready to go, so he wanted him as the offensive coordinator. He didn't say what school it was, but I'm pretty sure it was TCU. He had uh, to present to TCU saying, hey, I got this ensemble ready to go. My offensive coordinator is going to be Coach Dillingham. It didn't materialize. He went on again, like I said, to Oregon, and now he's at Arizona State where he was an alum. So I think the game plan, again, is to maintain balance for for the offense 
running, passing, really want to be on a consistent pace. Start fast is number two. You want to start fast, seven, 14 points in the first quarter and stay consistent. And if you do that, you're going to be able to have a comfortable game by the third or fourth quarter, especially you want to pace yourself and make sure you're at a consistent pace when it might be hot. If, especially Travis Hunter is not going to play. Okay. He's not going to be playing. It's he's not going to have all world athletes that can, that can play through the heat, however many snaps that they want. Okay. After that, Again, knowing it's not going to be an easy game. They're going to try to be physical. They're going to try to to hang with the Colorado Buffaloes and be pesky and hang in the game. That's the worst thing you want to do because if people start cramping up, they may have experience from USC and saying, look, we're going to approach this game plan different and we're going to hang around the full quarter and we can take the game if they're tired. So last game, I hope they got their sprints in from, from Colorado. When they play USC, they look, the defense especially, look very tired. They're going to have to make sure they're up for the game throughout the game. So it's a consistent presence, starting fast, and remaining balanced, running and throwing the ball. You know, if somebody has 200 yards receiving, that's great. But if everybody has 100, somebody's rushing 100, Dylan Edwards gets in, Alden McCaskill gets some carries, gets some touches, I'm cool with that. What I'm not cool with is a slow start and then it becoming a dog fight and then you got to see if you're going to win in overtime or, or who has the ball last in the full quarter. That is the wrong thing you want to do. Especially, again, you need to get rolling. You know, not so much momentum, but going in a Stanford four and two is going to be really crucial. Then you're five and two, and then you can get back into the Pac-12 race if that's where that team really wants to go. Okay, you never know what might happen. You know, Oregon and USC still got to play, and they still got to play out the rest of the schedule. Some can falter. You could be right back in the Pac-12 championship race, and then you could be right there with whatever bowl game that is there. So this is these kind of games right here. You're expected to win. You must win because you want to be bowl eligible. So I think this team is really going to be bowl eligible, like I said in my last video. But this is the roadmap to do it. They need this game. This is a must win, in my opinion. And if you get to Oregon State 5-2, and two, you get all your skilled players back. Travis Hunter, Slusher, Shiloh. You get all those skilled positions back back ready to go with Shador throwing the way he is you're going against that kid from Clemson DJ that transferred to Oregon State one thing he does do he does put that ball up uh, for grabs so there'll be some interceptions there'll be some turnovers and there's a way that they can win that game six and two Colorado Buffaloes we'll see how it goes on Saturday Heritage Sports